um, it's New Year's, right? 2023, okay? So uh, we love starting things. I love starting things. We all love starting things, right? The, the gym membership. Uh, again, I'm trying not to be cheesy, but it's shiny. It's new. It feels good when you go there. I already got my new kettlebell routine figured out, and I'm going to start it. I actually already have. So if you see me limping, it's because my legs hurt. Uh, and so we love starting things. I remember first date with my wife. It was so exciting. And not only my first date, but this was my first date. I was one of those weird Christian kids that, you know, my parents were dating goodbye, so I was like, oh, I better not. Yeah. And so I, I went on a date with my wife, Abby, and I was, it was so exciting. And it was the sparks flying, forbidden, all these things. Then you get married, and the sparks fly, but in different ways. <laughs> you know? Uh, Abby, I love you. That's my wife. Uh, but it's different starting and then continuing. Um, and I remember as well my conversion. You hopefully, if, if you have given your life to Jesus, maybe you can remember that or a time for that. And I, I remember feeling very in a dark place and just overwhelmed with life. And that scripture, and I gave God just a teeny bit. Actually, I was 13, and I remember crying because I couldn't read. Hooked on Phonics didn't work for me. And, and many of you know that God healed me and this and that. But um, I couldn't read. I remember crying, and Michael Marks were, walked in. I was homeschooled, and Tom Flasco walked in, and they saw me crying. And when you're 13 and you're a teenager, you're like, Ugh! and I remember saying, I'm never going to cry again. Now, I did, uh, and I did multiple times. But I, I got to this dark place where I was, I was just angry at God. I was angry at the world. I felt stuck in this this life. I don't know. I felt stuck in, in sin, things I didn't want to do. And then I gave Jesus just a teeny bit. I started, I started uh, my lunch break. I listened to scripture because remember I couldn't read. And Corinthians came. And many of you know this story of where God said uh, in Corinthians, he will not tempt you beyond what you can bear, but he will provide a way of escape that you may endure it. And I, I saw for the first time, the way of escape. I was like, this is the way where I can endure life. And, and it was like all that darkness, anger, hate was replaced with peace. Joy came because I found he was the way of escape. He was the way in, in, to endure life. He was the way to, to, to say no to this stuff that I had been doing so much. And now I could come to this way of an escape. But again, the battle is not starting. The battle is continuing. The battle is continuing and, uh, and keep going. Uh, it's a race. And that's what Paul says. I'm running a race. And if any of you run marathons, I know David Schultz has. He's almost as fast as me. I've never run a marathon, but I still like to think of him as slower than me. Uh, <laughs> you don't run fast at the beginning. It's a long race. And so... Um, some of you might not be interested in starting, but you're here. God's doing something. Some of you might not be interested in continuing, but you're here for some reason. And I just feel like God, it's been on my mind all week, John 2, verse 11, where Jesus turns water into wine, and we all know that story, and it says it was the first of his signs, and it displayed God's glory, and his disciples believed in him. If you can open up to God, I believe he will give you the first of many signs that will display God's glory, and not only his glory, but will bring faith into your life so that you can believe in him. But we're going to have to do something that none of us want to do, but I'm going to do it, because, and you're going to have to do it with me, okay? We all have this little skeptic in our brain. All these arguments, remember how I felt? I felt angry. I have felt enraged. I felt embittered. We got to put that away for just like an hour. I'm not going to preach for an hour, but as we, as we talk and sing, I want to put that away. So I'm, I like visual things because I'm Parker Marks. And so I want us all to open up a box. So your box, some of your boxes have to be huge because you've got the skeptic. You know what I mean? Great arguments. I want us all to imagine a box. You're going to have to do this with me. So take your hand out, a little box. Open that box. Come on, open it up. Now, I want you, Chris, you're not doing it. Oh, my gosh, Chris. 
You're like an elder too. Okay, now take that box, open it. Now I want you to take your, your skeptic, your arguments. Come on, David. And then now put it in that box. Now shut that box. Now lock that box. Now throw away the key. Uh, you can find it later. Now set that box aside, okay? All right, now that your arguments have all been depleted and gone away and the skeptic's gone, we can start. Now I want to pray, okay? Heart of stone into a heart of flesh. That's what we're going to pray, okay? That's what we need. Uh, we need a place for God's word to abide, a, a God's word to take root. So let's pray. Uh, God, I just ask that you would, man, you would show the first of many signs. People that think you're not around, you haven't been around for a long time that you would show such a powerful sign that they were like, man, God's glory was on display. Jesus was on display. And it just allows them to have faith in you. It, it puts that seed of faith in them. And I just ask that, you know, there's rocky soil, rough soil, hard dirt. I just pray a, a soft heart that can receive your word and receive your truth so that it can turn away from sin, can turn away from the world, and turn to you and find refreshment and find life. Please, Jesus, show us just a sign. And I know that sign is Jesus Christ, and I believe you have shown us signs, and you're going to continue to show us signs. I'm just excited today, and I just I pray, just let your word uh, give you glory. Amen. Okay, so let's get into the text. Um, I had to take off my watch. I realize every time I preach, my watch says to breathe. I'm not going to breathe today, so I threw that thing off. It actually just distracts me. I don't know why I'm telling you that. John 8, 31. Uh, Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him, if you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. If you abide in my word, another word for that, if you keep my word, continue in my word, you are truly my disciples, meaning some of us, are disciples, truly disciples. Some of us are not disciples, but he's also implying some of us might think we're disciples, but are not. Are you truly his disciple? True disciples continue and keep. They don't just start. They don't just like the beginning. Remember how the parable of the sower, where you know, it gets sowed into the weeds and then it grows and it gets choked out by the world? It gets choked out. Discipleship, true disciples don't just remain for a moment, but they continue into eternity with Jesus' words in us. And even though we don't walk with Jesus like the disciples in the flesh and blood, the same principles apply. We must count the cost and determine if we want to surrender everything to him, absolutely everything to him. That's discipleship. It's said more than 200 sometimes in the New Testament disciple. That's who we are referred to as. So first, it needs a place. His word needs a place in your heart. Later on in that chapter, verse 37 and 43, it says, my word finds no place in you. You cannot bear to hear my word. We need a place in here for his word to come and abide and live in there. So can you bear to hear Jesus' words today? Is there a place in your heart and in your life for it to come? And we love excuses. I got lots of excuses, tons of excuses. Too busy. We got that, right? Too busy, too tired. We just, we, we have so many things that are pulling us to just not follow him fully. I, I, there's that parable where Jesus holds a big wedding thing and he's like, he invites all his friends and then all his friends say, I can't show up. I, I have other things I've planned. And, and then he goes, well, invite all the people on the street. Invite the poor people. Like Jesus says, come follow me. And we do what the people say. I got to bury the dead. Come follow me. Well, I just got married. Come follow me. I just bought oxen. You know, I just started this new gig. I started this new job. Like we have the things in place where it's like, well, I can't really right now. So we're preoccupied. And really what it is, I think we're happy with giving just half of our lives. We, we like kind of the balancing act where we'll surrender some 
but then we like this other stuff. And so that's what these Pharisees were doing. They were like, we like your words, but then he started saying things they didn't like. And he was, they were like, wait, wait, wait. We don't like that part. We only like this part of your saying. We'll love one another, but I don't wanna like take up my cross and die and lay down my life. No, thank you. So we like the balancing act to some degree. Jonathan Edwards says, how can you expect to dwell with God forever if you so neglect to and forsake him here? I remember leading youth group. They only let me do it for a while. No, I'm joking. They, they like me doing it. But I would try to just get youth kids to like read the Bible. And, and whew, that's, a, that's a tough thing. You know what I mean? I mean, I would be like, dude, don't even, you don't even have to read. You just get this app and it reads it to you. It's so easy. I'd text them, and I'd be like, hey, read this. And I just couldn't. You can't make someone devoted. I could not cause that to grow. It it was like they were okay to come and kind of do this balancing act where I want Jesus, I want his salvation, but I don't want to give everything to him. I like the idea of salvation, but the way of discipleship is hard. I like his the idea of him, but I don't like the call. And it was just, it was just this balancing act. And I think C.S. Lewis knocks it out of the park here. He says, the terrible thing, the almost impossible thing is to hand over our whole self, all our wishes and precautions to Christ. But it is far easier than what we all, what we are all trying to do instead. For what we are trying to do is remain what we call ourselves to keep personal happiness as our great aim in life, and yet at the same time, be good. We're trying to like, I wanna be holy and set apart for God, but I also wanna do what I wanna do. Like little babies. Sorry, I feel that way. I'm like, well, I'm such a, I'm such a bad person. That's why. I, I almost want to cuss, but I'm not going to. I'm just so bad. You know where you're like, I just, I want to be set apart, but then I want this too. Well, I'll try to walk in the middle. We're, we're, we're on a bad diet. I mean, we're on a bad diet. It's like taking water, putting it in the, the car, and thinking, why won't the engine get night? Why? Why does God feel so far? Why do I feel so empty? And then we take the gasoline and we pour it on the plant and say, why is it dying? Man, we can't just feed ourselves with anything. We can't just take in anything. There's there's something abiding in my word, keeping my word, continuing in my word. Man, Jesus, I really love that you gave grace and salvation. Oh, but then we just set this aside and we go right back to how we've always done it. We drink and drink of things that just destroy. And it it causes us to become indifferent, not only indifferent to his word, but indifferent to God. Uh, Isaiah 29 says, Isaiah was, he had this scroll and it was a scroll from God, a letter from God. He said, hey, read it, read it, read it. And they said, well, it's, it's sealed. I'd have to open it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, please read it, it's from God. Well, I'd have to open it. Then I have to use my brain. I have to read it, think about it. And then he, he said, he, he gave it to people who couldn't read. Hey, read this. And, he, and they're like, well, I can't read, you know. We've come in different, got the excuses. I'm just too busy just whatever, and it does, that way of life is not continuing. It's it's actually continuing in what you had already been going in. So if discipleship ends when you leave this building, you might be not a disciple. If discipleship ends after Sunday, and you're not going to him, and you're not, and you only feel close to God on Sundays. Maybe the reason you only feel close to God on Sundays is because that's the only time you're getting fed. That's the only time you're abiding. That's the only time you're going to him. And so we treat this idea of discipleship as optional, but we like the perks of salvation. So what's the call? The call is to lose ourself. The call is everything. And God does ask us oftentimes to give up the big loves. So the question is, are you a disciple or are you a disciple just based on the current standards? And the current standards, we look around and go, oh, they gossip. 
man, all my other friends look at porn. Why can't I? Everyone spends their money on this. Why can't I? And we look at the people next to us and say, well, they're, they say they love God. So, and they do those things. Why? I mean, I can't. And we start this idea that we look at the, the standard around us rather than the standard, which is Christ. And, and even Paul, he says, he says this. I got to find it. Wait. And not that I have already obtained this or am already perfect, but I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus has made me his own. There's something that happens when Christ makes us his own. Radical feeding, radical abiding is what it's called to. Not just a a little weekly abiding, a little weekly taste, just radical day in, day out. The book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do according all that is written for it will make you way prosperous and you will have good success. And then Colossians 2.6. I love this passage. Therefore, you have, you, have received Christ, you have received Jesus the Lord. So walk in him. Continue in him. Continue in him. Rooted and built up in him and established in the faith just as you were taught, abounding in thanksgiving. Continue in it. So what do we need? I mean, we need something, because I know you and you know me. We can't even go to the gym. I'm going to fail my kettlebell routine. I'll lift it and go, that's heavy. You know, like we can't do the simplest things, let alone these things that are really, we need this power outside of us. We need something. I mean, to some degree, we need to repent. Like, there's just no easy way to say it. Like, for you Christians, for you disciples, like, there's no easy way to say it, and I'll let Peter say it. Acts 3, repent, therefore, and turn back, that your sins may be blotted out, that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord, and that he may send Christ appointed for you, Jesus. That's what we need. And I, and I just say, don't let my words condemn you. Let them move you and inspire you to say, I need to re-enlist. I need to go back to him. It's been too long, and I've had too many excuses. Let them move you to that, not move you further away. I am the vine, Jesus says. You are the branches. Whoever abides in me, he it is that bears much fruit. He's beginning a work. He's begun a hunger. Respond to it. And like, again, we don't abide by accident, right? We don't be disciples on accident. I have never had that happen to me. If you have, I need to know how that happened. Because when I am not fighting, this is, my, this is what I do, okay? I'm scrolling, scrolling. Do you want to look like you wanted to look like? What? It's like, do you want to look like how you look back in the day? And I'm like, yes, how? 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 Do you want hair? Yes, I want hair. How does it know? You can have it. And I I click it, and it goes 90-some percent. It'll return. Yes, yes, I want that. And I scroll a little further, and you will look like you used to, that handsome figure. Okay, and then the fine print, it's like, and half of the people turn into women. No! (laughs) It's like a catch. I'm like, no, no. (sighs) And that's what I fall into. If it's vanity or or, 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 or lust or pride, you, that's what you stumble into. The devil's crouching, ready to pounce. You don't stumble into, I'm walking, I'm scrolling. Glory, God, but, but, you know, God be this, that. That's not what happens. It's the other stuff. It's the world pressing in. The, the, the world trying to corrupt the world trying to feed. So it takes a purpose direction where the flow and the current is going this way and you're saying, no, I'm going to go this way. And it's not easy to go against the current. It's not easy to go against the flow. It's not easy because everyone's going this way. But we're saying, no, I'm laying down my life. Come follow me, take up your cross, lay it all down. We've counted the cost and we say everything and we go this way. 
And so we don't stumble into discipleship, we stumble into sin. And so we don't run without reason, we don't box without a purpose, as Paul says. It, it's purposeful. Uh, and a, a lot of us kind of stop here. We get the initial desire, we get the initial start, but the continuing, the old diet comes back in. Uh, we haven't really started practicing. Okay, so this is how we abide. Okay, I've given us like, this is a challenge. This is how we abide. And when I talk about abide and keep his word, he's talking about discipleship. This is how you're my disciple. You keep it. You continue in it. You walk in it. But it needs to be radical. Uh, can't be the status. J.C. Ryle says this, to abide in Christ means to keep up a habit of constant close communion with him, to be always leaning on him, resting on him, pouring out our hearts to him, and using him as our fountain of life and strength. And our chief companion and best friend, to have his words abiding in us is to keep his sayings, precepts, continually before our memories and minds and to make them the guide of our actions and the rule of our daily conduct and behavior. The fountain of life and strength. It's all leaning on him. There's no balance. It's all on him. It's pouring out all to him. I, 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 I did this thing. For Christmas, I got this dumb Bible app. It's not dumb, it's amazing. And, and I love it. And, and you put these little, the last install, they, they now have monks ch chanting, oh, 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 or priests, and it's like, yes, why do I feel closer to God? Uh, <laughs> it's ridiculous. But I, I, I put that on at night, and I lay my little phone down on my bed, and you have 100 options of voices, and Gregory's in the top five of my pick. And I got Gregory, and he's serenading me. And then I click the monks, ha, ah, and, and it's just like, uh, actually, the monks are a bit too much sometimes. But I, I, I do Gregory, and he's just reading the word. And I'm like, 10-minute timer, and I'll fall asleep to this. And I'm like, oh. And it's just like, this is what I needed. This, this, not Gregory, but the word. And it was just, he was reading it to me. And then my wife comes in and says, I need to talk. I got feelings today. No! <laughs> no, I'm like, let's talk, babe. Uh, just after the 10 minutes is up. Uh, again, I love my wife. Uh, so again, I mean, that's not even that radical. I just like Gregory reading to me. He has a good voice and, and the scriptures just feed me. Hudson Taylor says, union with Christ and abiding in Christ. What do they not secure? Peace, perfect peace, rest, constant rest, answers to all our prayers, victory over all our foes, pure, holy living, ever increasing faithfulness. All, all of these are the glad outcome of abiding in Christ. Go deeper. Go deeper into Christ. You're going to realize, allow more room for his word to abide. More room for his word to take root. And I, keep coming to church. Keep, keep going to community group. Those are great things that feed you. Getting prayer feeds you, right? These are all wonderful things. And so I'm, I'm just trying to encourage you to go to God's word regularly, daily bread. And I'm not trying to be legalistic, right? I, 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 it's not about like you read this every day and that's what, get, no, Christ has finished the work. But it's about it, as you dwell in this, it feeds you. It's the right diet and it, it strengthens you to continue and remain and keep and abide. It is how we do it. And so... Um, I mean, just think of scriptures. Like, I think of like that Matthew one, Matthew five, you know, blessed are those who are poor in spirit for they shall inherit the kingdom. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are those who have mercy, show mercy for they shall receive mercy. I just think those things can feed you for such a long time. I mean, John 16, 33, we love it. I say these things so that in, you, in me you may have peace, in this life, you have many troubles, but take heart, I have overcome the world. Like that can feed you for a lifetime. Just dwelling on that one verse can start feeding you. Talking to people, opening up to people, letting people lay their hands on you and pray for you can help. Coming here and hearing the word and worshiping God together can refresh you. Just continuing to say, I, I, want, I want everything to be on you, Jesus. I don't want the balance act. 
And I know you're like, wow, Parker, is this just like you're saying spiritual disciplines are good. I'm saying, no, the abiding in Christ, like it's just, it's just so good going to him daily. And, uh, and, and God does something in us. And I, I also want to encourage you who feel like the fire's gone out, the fire's done. God is still a consuming fire, it says in Hebrews. And he can relight the fire that has gone out. And he can bring a fire that you never thought could be in your life again. And I just think of Revelation 2, 5. Remember, therefore, from where you have fallen, repent and do the works you did at first. And again, that Acts passage, repent, your sins will be blotted out and times of refreshment will come. Guys, times of refreshment are, are to be had this week for you. This week for you. And this is what I do know. When the spirit of God pours out like an ax, it empowers us and equips us in such a way that it, it's hard to even describe. It, it almost puts like a fighting spirit in us. Just like Paul, I fought the good fight. I finished the race. I kept the faith. I'm, I'm, I'm striving for this. I'm going like Paul, man, that guy just ran the race. He ran it in such a way that it was inspirational. And here's the big deal. When the Holy Spirit fills you up and grace has been poured out, grace actually causes you to want to go to Jesus. And so grace is not opposed to effort. It's opposed to earning. Earning saying, I need to do this to get grace. I need to do this to get forgiveness. I need to do this so that God loves me. That's from the devil. And that's not grace. But grace, when poured out, it produces a fighting spirit and effort is poured out. Colossians says this, where Paul says, the Holy Spirit and all the power that God has work in you, work it out with all your effort, like effort. There's this thing of like, I wanna strive, I wanna fight, I wanna run. And I believe God wants to do that in us again, where there's a spirit of empowerment, where we just say, I wanna give it all. I wanna give it all. And it also encourages us. Because in 1 John 2, it says, and by this, we know that we have come to know him. We have come, this, this is how we know. It says this then, if we keep his commandments, by this, we may know that we are in him. Whoever says he abides in him ought to walk in the same way he walked. So as you start back up and going to him, you're gonna realize I'm his. I've been purchased. You're gonna see that he loves you like you never thought possible. You're gonna see that you can never outask him. You're gonna keep asking for more and more and it's gonna produce something in you. Just by that simple, simple step towards him, he's gonna surprise you and bring a sign and he's gonna wake you up again. My fire's out, well, he's a consuming fire. You're gonna be consumed and running. Like that's what happens when you just give him an inch. He, he, he takes your life. He wastes you for your life. And it's not just a start. You want to continue every day because the grace has been poured out and you realize you have been bought with a price. You are not your own. You are his. And you say, I'm going to live for him and him alone. I'm tired of this balance act. I'm tired of the world. I'm tired of doing both and this and that. I'm sick of it. I want to be all his, all his, every ounce, every fiber. I rely on him on all things. That's what happens. And I remember a dark time and kind of as, as we conclude in a sense, I remember a dark time um, where I was working night shift, and man, I was depressed. I wrote a song, step back from the ledge, my son, and it was like, woo, it was dark. That's how dark it was. I mean, I wasn't on any ledges, but I thought about it. Like, I was in a dark place, and I loved God, and I was his, but I, I started to wander a bit, and um, I don't know, a seed of faith came in. I gave God an inch and, and he filled me with something. And I was like, talking to Abby, I was like, I'm quitting my job. Because I realized I was giving up God for money. Like the job was killing me. And I was like, I'm giving up God? Like I hardly would come to church because I was too tired. It just, and I realized this is not, it's not worth it. I quit and God did a miracle. You know, two days before I, I was out the door and I was, mom and dad, I was planning to move in with them. It was going to be great. All five of us with mom and dad. Uh, so they were very happy uh, because, because they basically were like, we'll put you on days. 
Uh, you can have weekends off. And it was just amazing what God did in that 11th hour. And God does that a lot of times in the 11th hour. I mean, I had dyslexia 18 years of my life and God heals me after high school. What's wrong with that? Oh my gosh. But I praise him every day. Uh, the point is, I think God wants to do things today. He wants to relight the fire. He wants to cause a liberation to come in. But at the same time, it does cause us, we need to respond to him. And you're here for a reason. Like, you're here because, I, I would think you're here because you have a little bit of interest in God. You want, you've got a little bit of room there. And I just think God wants to finish that work today and, and light it on fire. Because here's that next passage. If you abide in my word, you're truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. You will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. The more I walk with Christ, the greater freedom I step into. I just realize this is life and life abundantly. This is, if, if, for the, if the sun has set you free, you are free indeed. I mean, there are mornings I wake and I'm just like, I am free indeed. I have life and life abundantly. Jesus says it, I am the Father. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love. Just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things I have spoken to you, that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be full. I mean, I wake up some mornings and I'm like, and I open up his word and I'm like, my joy is full. My joy is full right now. And then it like enlarges and you feel like you can take more and more. And that's just what he does. Is he, he pours out and he brings freedom. And it's not in stuff, it's not in money, it's not in jobs, it's in him and him alone. And I love this quote from Dr. Martin Lloyd-Jones. I'm not asking whether you know things about him, but do you know God? Are you enjoying God? Is God the center of your life, the soul of your being, the source of your greatest joy? He is meant to be. He is meant to be. There's just this reality. In continuing in it, we find greater liberation, greater need of him. I don't grow out of need of him. I grow in need of him even more. And I realize I need him even more. And like I said at the beginning, it's more important how we end than how we start. I don't got any cool ending here. Uh, it would have been awesome. But John 2, again, I believe God has begun a sign in your life that you feel this pull of like, I know the glory of God is here. I know it's in my life. I've seen it. And, and, and this seed of faith is being planted. Like the disciples believed in him after that. And I think a lot of us are tired of walking on the balance beam. We're tired of half this, half that. We want, we kind of want to go all in. So as I'm like closing God's word, I really do hope that it's the start of you living a life, continuing in it and abiding in it and, and keeping it because of what he's done in you. Not out of a legalistic, I must, I must, I must, but man, I want, I want, I want more of Christ. Van, you can come up. And uh, Philippians 1, 6 says, and I'm sure of this, that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. I just do think God's beginning work today. And for some of you, this is the very start. You, you don't actually know Jesus. And you're like, I think, I think I want to give it to him. This is the start. And, um, and for others, again, it's the continuing. I think God wants to relight a fire. And so I'm going to pray and as we pray and as we respond, again, I just encourage you to respond to prayer on both these sides. Community group, respond, get prayer. Go to a friend, respond. There's so many ways to respond, not only to God, but to respond with one another because God has put people around you to walk with you. And so I just think it's, it's crucial to walk with one another because here's the deal. When we live radically, it's, we need other radical people around us because we're going against the current. It's, it's like if we really gave it all, we'd realize, man, I need brothers and sisters to walk with me. So let's just pray. Uh, God, come.
come follow me, you say. Come follow me. God, let us say yes. Come follow me and I will make you fishers of men. God, I just believe you want to start a, a making process in people right now. That sign, that, that seed of faith, you're going to create real disciples here. A hunger that is poured out and empowered by the Holy Spirit. Not by man and woman's effort, but by the, the effort that has been f- fueled by you. And I just believe you're fueling people right now. And I just pray you fuel people more and more and more. That they say, I want to take up my cross. I want to lose my life so I may find it. I want to I bank everything on you. The, the sovereign fountain of life. The King of kings and Lord of lords. And that they're just ruined for you. No turning back. The cross before me, the world behind me. No turning back. They're just running for you. God, let I just ask a crazy prayer. Let everyone in this room finish well. Let them run the race. Let them keep the faith. Let them fight the good fight. Let them finish well. God, let them continue in you. Let them continue in abiding in your love, abiding in your word, and abiding in you, Jesus Christ. Amen.